Um, I thought today was a tough game for us. Uh, I thought Kelsey did a great job, especially when they came up and they hit that home run. Obviously, I called the wrong pitch, and, and it, I mean, the girl crushed it. And then that really changed the momentum. Their crowd, their crowd went crazy. You know, their stands did it really showed that uh, JMU belonged here. And so um, I thought we were really quiet. I thought we were tentative up to bat. And, and um, I'm just happy that we got to adjust. But I thought JMU is a very good team. They're feisty. Uh, they fight hard. They do everything the right way. So um, I'm happy to escape that game with a win. So it was some kind of tenuous at bats. It looked like, especially after Griffin struck out, I'm not sure which inning it was. Yes. It, kind of, it looked like you took it upon yourself to kind of fire these girls up um, on your own. Yeah, I don't do that often. But um, sometimes I will do that. There's. Um, I think as a coach, I'm not a big yeller. I'm not somebody who does that. But I believe that there are times when you have to make them more scared of you than they are of the situation in front of them. And I think that the postseason, sometimes people can get distracted by it's not they want to do well. They want to do very well. And sometimes and they know they're carrying the team when you're not getting a lot of runs throughout the whole lineup like we did not yesterday. The few people that are capable of producing sometimes put too much pressure on themselves. So. Um, at times, you have to distract athletes um, and help them get out of their own way. So, yeah, I did take it upon myself to to get on Griffin and, and Nikki a little bit to make sure that they did okay. But those are two athletes that can handle that. I could not do that to everybody in my order. I can do that to them because they're great competitors. When you say more scared of you in this situation, what, uh, how frightening? Why are they I'm not that frightening. frightening? No. Um, <laughs> I'm not that frightening at all, um, but I very rarely, uh, I'm very pointed, I'm very direct though, but I very rarely get on people. So when I do, it means something. I think sometimes when coaches constantly are yelling at players, they have a tendency to, to tone them out, but that's not really our way here with Kentucky softball. We're very, we're very analytical in what we do, and we're not very emotional. So sometimes when we do pull out the emotional card, sometimes I just think it helps it's that slap across the face that you need to like wake up and, and do what you need to do. And, and there, I can't say enough about those two. I think they've done so much for our program, especially lately, and uh, we would not be here without them. But unfortunately, we need them as much as we need Kelsey to produce on the mound. That's, that's the reality of it. When your team's not um, producing a lot of runs offensively, the people, people who are capable have to step up. That's their job. That's their role. And what part of it was after their second at bat each. I thought that they were kind of, you could tell they were a little, um, it wasn't a real slap, don't write it that way. <laughs> I don't even get skin sued. But um, <laughs> um, that wake up call came um, probably after their second at bat. You know, the first at bat, I, I, you know, you kind of look and you see what's going on. But by this time, the second at bat comes around, if they're not in attack mode, you know, you could be in big trouble. So you better, better straighten them out and get them in attack mode. So then hopefully, their third at bat through, they're, they're ready to get after the pitcher, which is what happened today. I thought that everybody did a great job adjusting in their third at bat. I thought the first at bats were terrible. I thought the second at bats were just a little bit better than awful. But then I thought the third at bats, I thought everybody did a good job of really um, focusing on, on each pitch and trying to win it, each pitch. Kelsey, uh, the plan starter. Yes, you know she'll she'll start. She um, as long as she's pitching well, she'll stay in there. If she's not pitching well, I have um, I have a lot of confidence in our other pitchers. But um, like in the SEC tournament, um, I have a there's a comfort level with Kelsey because we're on the same page. We think a lot alike, and, and she's shown on the big stage. She now has all of this postseason experience. So it's hard to put people out there that don't have as much postseason experience. Cumbus does. Cumbus um, pitched last year in our regional championship game, so she does have experience to that. Um, that's great. The two freshmen are outstanding pitchers. They don't have as much experience, but I know they can win. If I put them in there, I know they can win, and we'll plan for them winning. Um, but yeah, right now the plan, if Kelsey wakes up and she's feeling good, she'll go tomorrow. What does it mean to not have to play another game today and then not have to win two tomorrow? Well, it means a lot from the standpoint of Nunley has not thrown four games in a row all year. We She threw three in the SEC tournament, did awesome. I. I elected not to pitch her in the championship game because I knew that we would need her this weekend and I didn't know the, the effect and the toll that it would take her on her body. So um, to be able to win today, really to be able to put her and um, let her relax, let her recover, and then she'll be a little bit more fresh to, to go tomorrow. The crowd really got you going there. Yes. Can you talk about that and how, how important they were today to get you guys going? 
I thought I thought a lot of our adjustment the third time through the order was the fact that the crowd the crowd really got into it. You could hear them chanting um, blue and white. You could hear them really cheering when Silver came up and got that uh, hit up the middle. Everybody went crazy, and I actually think the crowd was a lot of the reasons why we adjusted. They got a little smarter and focused, but that's also a good wake up call when the crowd gets you in it. So. Um, I thought the crowd was the big difference today, and I, and I don't know what would have happened um, at the end of the game if we did not have the Big Blue Nation here. I, I thought the crowd was tremendous, and I actually think there are a lot of the reasons why we scored the runs at the end and won the game. How, how much credit should we give uh, James Madison's pitcher for at least through five innings? Oh, you guys? I think she deserves a ton of credit. I think she's very good. You know, my um, displeasure with our offense has nothing to do with – I think she's great, but I think when you – face great pitchers, you have to be that much better. And um, I thought she did a great job. She, she did a good job of, of hand jamming people. She threw her change up a ton today. She did not throw it at all, hardly against DePaul. She only threw it a couple times. So she had a different game plan. I thought that was great. I thought that she could come in and tight to, um, she was able to come in and tight, strike games out at the beginning. That was a big deal. And then I, I think that the fact that we couldn't get hard contact on the ball was because she was just throwing, she was throwing that curve ball and then she was mixing it. Um, she was going outside, you know, and the fact that she's a lefty is a big deal. But I, I think she's one of the better, best pitchers we've faced. You know, we face a lot of good pitchers, and she certainly belongs in that discussion. But I do believe she deserves a ton of credit for, um, for our lack of offense today. Speaking of change of sink, uh, I was talking to your pitcher, and she said she threw a new the pitch that you, you would call a change of sink. Is that correct? Is that done to keep their offense? Yeah, I think you have to now. Girls are so big and strong, and, and – um, you know, everybody's got great coaching now, and they're prepared. And so if you can't mix speeds, I think that they have an opportunity to really barrel up on the ball. So I think softball now, you're seeing, just like baseball, you're starting to see people change speeds a lot. You're seeing them use two and three different speeds. That wasn't necessarily the part of the game a lot five, ten years ago, but it's become a big part of the game now. So I think it's essential that um, any pitcher needs to, <clears throat> against a good offense, needs to be able to mix speeds. And I, I thought that both pitchers did that really well today. Rachel, were you saying a minute ago that you actually saw your hitters getting tight or you just sensed they might and so you're going to preempt their strike? So oh, no, they were tight. I mean, no, they okay. were late. I mean, they were late on just about every ball. I can I can tell when, they're, when their timing's off. It, it, there's a mechanical flaw. Um, with the, any hitter, when their backside is, is not fluid and going through the ball and they're late on it. And, and a lot of the times um, that has to deal with how tight they are. So, no, that was absolutely a mechanical issue. And, and I think the crowd... I think the crowd being so excited like helped loosen them up a little bit and it really put them in the attack mode. That's why the crowd was such a big deal today and why they were able to get those hits. And you, have you seen your second guess yourself on calling the pitch to uh, uh, the player that hit the home run for James Madison? Can you uh, go through what your thinking was? And well, yeah, the, the, um, the hitter from James Madison, I don't remember her name. I just know her face. and. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, I could go for the home run on the box score. Um, she she did a great job. Okay, she came in first pitch. She hit a drop ball and she hit it really hard. And that was the wrong pitch call. That was not. Um, that was obvious. I could tell it was the wrong pitch call as soon as she she started swinging at it. And so then her next couple of times up to bat, I knew that I needed to keep her off balance. Um, well, I needed Nunley to keep her off balance. She has to pitch it ultimately. But I, I couldn't put her in that situation again. And um, it was important that we didn't give her a ball that she could get the angle of her bat down. But the thing that she did that was really cool is she adjusted and was able to hit the high pitch well. And she flew out to center field on a rise ball. And um, most hitters can't, she made a good adjustments. Most hitters can't do that. So she's a really good hitter. Um, so she was able to do that. And she, she was actually probably about an inch from hitting a second home run, which I was pretty impressed by. So then her next time up to bat, um, we didn't know really if we we're going to pitch to her or what we we're going to do with her. So because she just learns quick, she has a great barrel, she has great time, and she's really quick. So even though she's small, she's very ballistic and, and just a really, really good hitter. Can either, either of you guys talk about the other team's pitcher and how effective she was through the first five innings? She's very good. She's a really good pitcher. She's a competitor. She's really going after us. Yeah, she was really good at uh, getting ahead of the count and then um, making us chase a little bit. She has a really good spin as well, but <clears throat> we had to make adjustments by the end of the game to pull out that win. Can you describe the, the adjustments? 
Well, my personal adjustment was since she has so much spin on the ball, I had to get a shorter swing on it. So, and tracking the ball deeper into my bat, I guess. So, I don't know. Mike, this one? All right. Nikki or Griffin, did either of you get concerned about whether those adjustments were going to be made in time? You know, with the way she was mowing, mowing you all down there for a while. Um, we knew the last time through we had to do it then, and that was the only time that mattered. The times before, we kind of just had to let him go, try to get better the last time. Right, and it was only a one-run ball game, so we knew that one swing could change the whole game. So. What difference does it make? It's definitely good because we get to rest for the rest of the day and come out fresh tomorrow while the other teams battle each other. Thank you, Griffin. Can you talk about sort of what changed? I know you guys didn't bat in the fifth inning, but it seems like uh, since starting with that sort of game from fly ball to center, the offense sort of picked up after that. What, what changed uh, here in the dugout during that half inning? I think we finally saw someone get some solid contact on her, and we're like, all right, sh we can hit her. Like, so. Games have sparked us all year, and I think that just really kind of got everybody going. Everybody got fired up, and the rest of the people in the lineup started battling better in their at-bats. Mm -hmm. How about you, Kelsey? How, how would you rate your pitching performance today? Uh. I guess good, we won, so that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would rate her a 10. Yeah. So I, I don't mean, know about that, but. <laughs> I give her a 10. We won. <laughs> so. What uh, the pitch that the, the, the uh, player hit the home run off of, how, what kind of a pitch was it, and how well did she hit it? Um, it was a drop ball in, and she was just on it. Like, she was a little bit off the plate, and coach had told me that she was really good at dropping her barrel. and. It was probably a little bit slow, and she was just on time and crushed it. So, <laughs> bad pitch by me. Oh, awkward. Good swing by her. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I threw changeups. Yeah, I threw changeups quite a bit the last half of the game, and just try and keep them off balance and make them guess at you know what's coming. Is that a call coming from the dugout? That's from Coach, Coach Lawson. She calls the pitches. Kelsey, does that get your juices flowing a little bit extra when you see a pitcher pitching like the James Madison pitcher was? Um, you mean like, does it pump me up or? Yeah, does it get you even a little more pumped up it's, it, when you're a pitcher, when their their pitchers pitching so well and y'all are struggling to do much? Um, well, I know I just got to focus on what what my job is and. Just, you know, whatever happens and you know on offense, I just got to go out there and try and stop them from scoring. So that's what I try and focus on during the game. Did that, Kelsey? Did that one ball hit you in the mask? It sure did. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What, what is that like? Just, you know. Um, actually, that's never happened. Like ever since I broke my nose when I was eight, I wore the mask, and then I've never gotten hit in the face since. So that was really shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't seem to fade you at all. No, I mean, it happened. You just got to forget about it and move on. I notice when you warm up before each inning, you don't warm up with the mask on. Well, what is that about? Is it about something? I don't know. I just, I've never warmed up with it on, so I'm kind of superstitious and I just don't do it. You had 11 strikeouts, and now you've been working to become, you know, get a, get that strikeout pitch. It seems like a couple three two counts, two two counts tonight. You were able to find that strikeout pitch. Was there something different in your approach today to get that strikeout? I mean, you had a career high tie in 11. Mm, maybe just keeping it in mind um, and just not taking, you know, not trying to. I don't know how to how to say it. Maybe just <clears throat> thinking about striking them out and just throwing hard and. Believe in and coach and whatever sign she gives to me that I can, you know, that I can uh, execute. Yeah, execute. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> Shoot, sorry. <laughs> so, not only trusting in coach, but trusting in myself that I'm going to get the job done. For Nikki and uh, Griffin, uh, runs have been hard to come by so far in the two games you guys have played. 
How does the pitching so far in this region compare to what you've seen, you know, in the SEC and so on? I think mean, once you get to the postseason, everybody's good, and everybody knows the season's on the line, so it kind of steps everything up a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I mean, they're pitchers we haven't seen all season as well, so we have to adjust more, especially now.